Number 43, example 12.8 dealt with the flow of a saline solution in an IV system. Letter A, verify that a pressure of 1.62 times 10 to the 4 newtons per square meter is created at a depth of 1.61 meters in a saline solution, assuming its density to be that of seawater. All right, so here's a little IV column, right? There's a certain column of IV fluid above, let's say, this particular point at the bottom. And we know that there would be a pressure experience at the bottom of this column of IV fluid because there's a certain weight to the column of water, right? Um, also, we know the density. They told us to assume that it's the same as salt water. And then we have the height here. So we're, we're thinking about, well, how is pressure related to height and density and all that? Think back to the last chapter, right? We know that the pressure is a function of the height of that particular fluid above a certain point multiplied by the density of that fluid multiplied by gravity. So really to find the pressure here at the bottom of this IV column, we can simply take the height of the uh, fluid above that particular point, which is 1.61 meters, multiply it by the density of that fluid, which they told us to assume it's about that of seawater, so which is 1,025, and then times it by gravity. So let's see what the pressure comes out to be. So it's going to be 1.61 times 1025 times then 9.8. And here we get a value of about 1.6. Uh, 2 times 10 raised to the fourth, right? And this is in terms of newtons per meter square, aka Pascal, same thing. But if you notice now, these look eerily similar. And we just verified it. Cool. Now let's take a look at letter B. So letter B says now, calculate the new flow rate if the height of the saline solution is decreased to 1.5 meters, All right? So now... Uh, we have to think about how this will change. So if the height of now this column of IV fluid becomes lower, all right, a relative, I guess, relative to the point of insertion into the arm, right there, okay? Um, if this IV column becomes lower, what happens to the pressure at the bottom of this column? It should also go down, right? Why? Well, here's the, here's the relationship. Height goes down, pressure goes down by the same proportional amount, all right? So wait a minute, if the pressure goes down, how does that affect flow rate? Oh, right, here's the formula. If I get a change in pressure, whatever pressure it changes by will affect Q in the same fashion. There's a direct relationship, right? So if pressure goes down by 10%, Q will go down by 10%, etc. cetera. All right, so now uh, what I'm gonna do here is take a look at the right-hand uh, side, the formula. I know that Q and my change in pressure here is directly related. So basically, since they're talking about, you know, finding a new flow rate and, and, you know, given new pressures and so on and so forth, I know I can create a simple proportion. And I know that the Q is going to be pro uh, proportional or equal to that of the change in pressure, okay? But instead of writing it as change in pressure, I'm going to write Q, let's say original, is equal to the pressure original. And now this ratio can be created by saying Q new is going to be equal to then the new pressure. So, and I've developed how to uh, get this ratio, one of the problems in the past, I don't remember the number, I think it was in the 20s maybe. Um, but in any case, what we now uh, need to figure out is they're asking us calculate the new flow rate, so that's Q sub n, right? So to algebraically manipulate this, this is easy. Take Q sub n, move it out of the denominator on the left, up into the numerator on the right. Take then P sub n, move it up into the numerator on the left, Take P sub O, move it down into the denominator on the left. And here is now our little equation, all right? So cleaning this up just slightly. One second. Cleaning this up. Oh, no, no, no. Cleaning this up just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. That's from a movie. If you guys know what movie that's from, leave me a comment in the section below. Um, all right. So here is the equation. So... Uh, now what I need to know, right, is how do I calculate the new pressure and the old pressure? Well, remember that these pressures are just a function of height, density, and gravity. So I'm going to plug in that or these variables for pressure now in each case, okay? So it's going to be the new height times then the density times the gravity multiplied by, so I'll put this in parentheses, multiplied by the original uh, flow rate, all divided by the original height times the density times gravity. Look what happens to density and gravity. Take care, see you later, bye-bye, right? And remember, this is all equal to the, now the new flow rate. So basically, it's just a simple proportion, right? That the, that the proportion of the new height relative to that of the original height multiplied by the 
original Q value will tell us now the new flow value. So here it is. Simple, right? Now, what is the original Q? That's where we need the other problem. I think it tells us right up in here that the original flow rate was about 0 0.120 cubic centimeters uh, per second, all right? Now, we just have to be careful in terms of the units we use here, uh, but you know this is actually a, a proportional or this is a simple ratio. So actually, I, t I, I take that back because if we plug this in as meter and this in as meter, the meters will cancel. So it actually won't influence it. All right. But you could convert this, you know, if you wanted into meters cubed or whatever. I'm just going to try to do it simply here uh, by just saying now. So let me actually, you know what? Uh, let me see if I could do this just one second. Okay, so now uh, the new height was, uh, it said it was decreased to 1.5. So the new height is going to be 1.50 meters. The old height was the original, 1.61 meters. The old flow rate was at, as what we said, one, uh, 0 0.120. And now that will give us the new flow rate. Now remember, the new flow rate will be in centimeter cubed per second because those are the units that I used. So we get 1.5 divided by 1.61. Multiply that by 0.12. And we have now... In terms of three sig figs, it's going to be 0 0.112, 0 0.112, and this will now be in, hold on one second, this will now be in uh, cubic centimeters per second. That's the new flow rate. If you need it in cubic meters per second, do the conversion. So we got that. Now, letter C. It says, at what height, at what height would the direction of flow be reversed? So basically, you have to think about the nature of what's going on here, right? When this IV column, right, there's a tube. It's being inserted um, into, right, somebody's arm via a needle. And in order for this flow, or I should say in order for this IV solution to flow into the person's vein, okay, uh, it has to overcome a certain amount of pressure that's already inherent in the vein. Now, if these two pressures... Okay, if the pressure, if the pressure of the saline solution equals the pressure of the blood, then no flow happens. Okay, if so, this would be no flow. No flow. If the pressure of the saline solution is greater than that of the pressure of the blood, then we get flow, meaning the right flow, I should say, right flow from the saline solution into the vein. But if we have the reverse, where we have the saline solution, the pressure is less than the pressure of the blood, then we have reverse flow. Or, you know, blood's going to be coming out of the patient now. All right. Um, so what we need, to, so this is basically what we need to know in order to try to answer the question. So it says, at what height would the direction of flow be reversed? So it's any case where this is true, where the pressure of the saline solution is less than that of the pressure uh, of the blood. All right. So now let's take a look. So I know this to be true, that the flow will be reversed when the pressure of the saline solution is less than the pressure of the blood. Now, uh, we're trying to find what height that the saline solution has to be. So remember, I'm thinking about how is height connected to the pressure of the saline solution. Oh, right. It's just the same thing, right? The pressure of the saline solution is equivalent to the height of that saline solution relative to the point of insertion, right, of that needle in the vein. Um, multiplied by gravity, multi excuse me, that's density. So I got distracted because I, I was thinking about that lyric from uh, Dave Matthews' band, needle in the vein, needle in the vein. I, I don't suggest you do that. I'm not saying that, but that's from a Dave Matthews' band song. If you know the song, leave a comment below. There's a lot of movie and, and apparently song references in this video, but I don't know why my mind is going there. Anyway, let's get back on track. So this is then multiplied by gravity. That has to all be less than the pressure of the blood. Okay, the pressure of the blood in the vein, that is. So what is the pressure uh, in the vein? Well, it tells us in the problem, it says it's 8 millimeters of mercury. That's the gauge pressure, which is essentially the pressure inside of that vein. So I know that this piece of B is 8 millimeters of mercury. Now, I probably don't want to work with that, right? We want it in Pascal. So all I need to do is now convert this 8 millimeters of mercury, all right, into Pascal. So remember that there's 1.013 times 10 to the a fifth Pascal for every 760 millimeters of mercury. That's because they're both equivalent to an atmosphere. So now I can just do this conversion quickly, right? There's going to be 8 times 1.013 times 10 to the fifth divided by 760. So what do we get? We get a value about 
So there's going to be about 1,066 pascals. Okay, this is the pressure. Um, this is P sub B. So now that I got the right units here, I can probably start doing my calculation. All right. So we're solving for the height of the saline solution. Okay. So we got the height of the saline solution times then the density of that saline, which is going to be 1.25 times 10 to the third, or just to save some space, 1,025 times that of graph. Actually, you know what? Sorry, guys. One second. We're, we're good. But I, I let me just solve this uh, for the variables first. All right. So the height of the saline solution should be less than uh, or at any time that it's less than the pressure of the blood divided by the uh, density of the saline solution times gravity, we're going to get reverse flow. Okay. So let's solve this on out. So the pressure of the blood we just found was 1066 approximately divided by the pressure of the, uh, excuse me, the density of the saline solution, which is 1025 multiplied by 9.8 and plug this all in into the calculator and let's see what we get. So this is then going to be divided by 1025 times 9.8. And we realize now you just got to be careful, right? The units here are in terms of meters. Okay. You got to know what we're talking about. Pascal. Right, and this is also kilogram per cubic meter, and this is meter per second. So the height here that's going to get spit out is in terms of meters. So this is point one zero six one zero six meters. Okay, meters. So that is an answer. Okay, it doesn't tell us what you know unit they wanted in. So that's the value in meters. If you want it in centimeters, multiply it by one hundred, meaning ten point six centimeters. So if here's your person, right? So what does this actually mean? If here's your person. And the bottom of this saline bag, so let's say here's, you know, here's the bag or whatever, roughly, okay? And we got the needle going in. If this height differential, okay, is going to be less than 10 centimeters or so, we have a problem. We're going to have reverse flow, all right? So if any of you going into the medical field, please make sure this doesn't happen to any of the patients, all right? Always remember that... That bag has to be above uh, the point of insertion, and more than likely, it, it can't be even with it. It should be higher than even, okay? Assuming, by the way, that there is, that it's just a saline drip and it's natural gravity here and there's nothing, you know, kind of, you know, compressing this fluid in here to push it in, all right? Okay. That sums it up for this problem, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. That'd be awesome. Hit the like button too and tell your friends. All right. Thank you so very much. Take care.